Have you ever wondered what the treatment options are for patients with ALS? Maybe you've heard of ALS but are not sure what it is? Well, you're in luck because this video will explore what ALS is and how ALS is currently treated. The nervous system can be compared to a postal service because just as a postal service delivers messages to a variety of locations, so too does the nervous system transmit messages to various regions of the body. The brain can be thought of as a post office, as the brain, just like the post office, is a site where all the messages are transmitted from. The messages that are sent out from the brain can be likened to mail trucks that are sent out from the post office. In the nervous system, our brain sends messages to our muscles through specialized nerve cells called motor neurons. These motor neurons provide a path for the messages to travel to different parts of the body, including the muscles, similar to how roads serve as a path on which mail trucks travel to get to different delivery sites. Roads that are well paved allow the mail trucks to easily travel from the post office, the site of delivery, just as well functioning motor neurons allow messages from the brain to be delivered to the muscles where movement is generated. However, roads that are filled with potholes and cracks are like dysfunctional neurons that block the movement of mail trucks from the postal office or messages from the brain. In ALS, the motor neurons are dysfunctional like the pothole filled roads, which prevent the transport of messages to the muscle. ALS is otherwise known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and is a disease where the motor neurons break down and eventually die off. When the motor neurons die off, they are no longer able to transmit the messages from the brain to the muscle to initiate movement, which leads to gradual paralysis. Despite sounding complicated, insights about the disease can be gained when the name amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is examined. Amyotrophic means no muscle nourishment. In the disease, the muscle is not nourished in the sense that it is not being stimulated by the messages from the brain. Consequently, this lack of stimulation or nourishment causes the muscle to atrophy or break down. This word lateral in the word name refers to the area where the motor neurons are located in the spiral cord. Lastly, the word sclerosis, which means hardening, is included in the name amyotrophic lateral sclerosis because as the motor neurons break down, they harden. ALS usually begins in the hands, feet, or limbs and then spreads to other regions of the body. As such, ALS is often experienced as weakness in the legs, feet, ankles, or hands. As the disease progresses and more neurons break down, the muscle atrophy worsens and patients often have difficulty keeping good posture and walking. Additionally, during this period, tripping and falling often occurs and people may eventually lose the ability to speak, eat, move, and breathe as the muscles that control these actions degenerate. There are several treatment options available for patients with ALS. Specifically, a two-pronged approach is straightened to treat ALS, with firstly, the prescription of pharmaceutical drugs, and secondly, the management of symptoms to improve patient survival and quality of life. In the first approach, two pharmaceuticals called Rylazole and Ediverone have received FDA approval and are currently prescribed for the treatment of ALS. Rylazole has been shown to slow the progression of ALS and in several clinical trials extended survival or time to insertion of a breathing tube. More studies must be conducted to elucidate the mechanism of action of Rylazol, but preliminary studies suggest that the drug reduces the levels of a chemical messenger that is found in high levels in patients with ALS. Adaverone protects the brain by scavenging free radicals. Free radicals are molecules that cause chemical reactions. These chemical reactions have the capacity to damage and kill neurons. As a result, Adaverone can help slow the progression of ALS by reducing the frequency of chemical reactions that can damage the motor neurons. The symptom of management approach employs a range of therapies to address the symptoms of ALS. The most common therapies prescribed include breathing care, physiotherapy, speech therapy, and nutritional therapy. Breathing care is when respiratory failure is a primary cause of death in ALS because the muscles that control breathing are eventually paralyzed in ALS. In order to assist patients in their breathing, Breathing devices including the continuous positive airway pressure CPAP or bilevel positive airway pressure BiPAP may be required. In advanced stages of ALS, a surgical hole may be made in the windpipe and is referred to as a tracheostomy procedure, so this machine can directly inflate and deflate the lungs. Physical therapy is when ALS, a physical therapist, introduces patients to exercise that improve muscle strength, flexibility, and range of motion. Physical therapy can help alleviate symptoms of muscle weakness, immobility, tripping, and falling. Speech therapy is in when in ALS eventually causes the muscles to use for speech to break down, which can produce stirred speech and speaking difficulties. 
Speech therapy can teach patients adaptive techniques to reduce speech impediments. Additionally, speech therapists can introduce patients to alternative communication modes, including the use of alphabet boards, tablet computers with text-to-speech applications, and computer-based equipment with pre-synthesized sentences. Nutritional therapy. Since the muscles that are engaged while swallowing eventually become paralyzed in patients with ALS, nutritional therapy is often necessary to ensure patients are receiving a sufficient caloric intake. In early stages of the disease, patients are advised to have liquids and soft foods that can be swallowed with relative ease. Eventually, as the disease progresses, a feeding tube is necessary to achieve optimal health. In addition to the treatments described earlier, there are also a number of treatments that are under investigation, one of which has received considerable attention, that is, stem cell-based therapy. Stem cells have a capacity to develop into several different cell subtypes, and therefore have considerable regenerative capacity as they can replace dead or dying cells. Thus, scientists hope that they can take advantage of the regenerative capacity of stem cells in order to replenish the damaged neurons in ALS and restore patients' capacity to produce movements. Although some evidence has demonstrated promising results, further research must be conducted on the use of stem cell-based therapies in humans and FDA approval must be granted. Despite the devastating progression of ALS, several therapies, including the prescription of pharmaceuticals, a variety of symptom targeted therapies, and possibly in the future, stem cell-based therapies, can be employed for the treatment of ALS. To learn more about ALS, please visit the ALS Society at www.als.ca.